Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome to that channel. If you're new here, my name's Steve Roden. We go on epic adventures every single week. And today we're exploring one of the most haunted places in the world and one of the top urban locations as well. I'm super excited, but besides my excitement, I'm also kind of sad because of the dark history that happened here, which I'll be explaining throughout this video. Anyway, we're gonna be exploring the place, documenting it with photos and this video. I hope you guys really enjoy it. But let's head inside, and before we begin, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Huh. There's a lot of graffiti I'm seeing. I think Ryan is upstairs. Did you just climb these? Yeah. I mean, I'm fat, so it's good. Dude, I'm, I'm fatter. <laughs> So yeah, I joined here with a band in New England. You guys gotta check him out. His Instagram link will be down below. And he's already taking some photos. It's pretty sketchy, man. Yeah? yeah? It's sketchy to get here, but I think the, the story is worth it. Worth showing off. For sure. They say this is the most haunted place in the world too, man. Do you believe in that stuff? 100,000 deaths over the course of a millennia? Possibly. Poviglia Island first appears in historical records dating as far to the 6th century and was populated until the residents fled warfare in 1379. The island is mostly known for its dark history and was used as a quarantine station in 1776 for those suffering the plague and other diseases and later became a mental hospital. Over a hundred thousand deaths occurred on the island and because of this, the island is frequently visited by paranormal investigators. The mental hospital closed down in 1968 and the island has been vacant since. Whoa. The floor is completely obliterated. And the ceiling. We gotta be a little bit careful. What was that? Yeah, this is insane how much is overgrown. Oh yeah. We're hearing voices right now. First time yeah, for us we too. From, we came all the way from Lance. the States. Yeah. 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 We came from Lance. Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. It looks like the beginning of our, our movie, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people died here, so it's pretty creepy. Yeah, yeah we're, we're just photographers. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Kind of sketch out by them, to be honest. Look how thin they are. I wonder why they fell apart downstairs. We made it. Oh man. Whew. That was pretty sketchy. So far none of the floors has had anything interesting. I think the only interesting place to get to is definitely the tower. The most famous story is that of a doctor who allegedly experimented on patients with crude lobotomies. According to various reports, the doctor jumped from the bell tower in the 1930s after claiming he had been driven by mad ghosts. Decades later, nearby residents claimed to still hear the bell, although it was removed many years earlier. I'm gonna head back down all the way to the first floor because I think that's the only way to get inside. Yeah. We'd have to move a lot of stuff. Move from the other side, though. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can drop down through a hole. 
I want to check around it. We have to get inside there because I don't think any other explorer has been inside the tower at all. So this is what it looks like from the outside. Just all overgrown trees. The light through the door is probably coming through here, through this window. Yeah? You might be able to get to the front. I think we're onto something. Look at this. It looks like this part of the building is still being in use. You can hear some ventilation going on. That's strange, right? Huh? Oh yeah. So we just made it to another part of the building. Same one. Looks like this could have been a kitchen. No way. We did find the entrance to the tower. You have to climb That's so some sketchy rail. So I watched the suits video. Yeah. And they got like halfway up it and they were like, no. I don't think I can even do this myself. Why not? It just feels so rusty and old like. And I wonder what's halfway up to make them say no. So this is called the Loom Panel from Loom Cube. Probably the best light out right now that's portable and lightweight. Wow, it just lit up the whole entire room. Now we can kind of see a lot better. Not only that, but look. Look at this. There's a screen on the back that's LCD. It tells you the percentage of brightness and the color temperature and how long this would last for. So let's up the power to like 100%. Now we're, now we're talking. Dude, that's weird. It likes to, you get to the little platform and then you have to take another set of ladders. Uh, if you guys like the light too, check out my affiliate link down below. You'll find it right there. It's called the Loon Cube Panel. All right, little Ryan, stay safe up there. So the reason why I'm doing this is because it's best to have one person go and check it out than to have two people go and not be able to like get all the way to the top. So if, if Ryan thinks that I'm able to get all the way to the top too, then I'll do it. Huh? All right, good luck, bro. <laughs> Looks like they got rid of the ladder. For real? Yeah. Looks that way. So we can't get to the top, huh? Who's going? Sorry. Okay. I mean, I could probably do it, but. It's pushing it. Yeah. If it's pushing it, then it's play it safe. So this is your gut. Well, I'm saying it's pushing it because there's no ladder. <laughs> so you have to like climb just like riding off the stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of stuff coming out of the wall, but I mean, I can get it, but it's just, it's, it's 100 years old. It's 90 years old. So, we tried, but the sheer height of this explains why the doctor used this to either commit suicide or be thrown from it. I'd rather know that it's not possible than go without it and have it be possible, yeah.
Just found an old service elevator. So, that was the kitchen back here? Yeah, that's what I thought too. So, this was the kitchen, and they may have used this room for the service elevator. Mm. Send food to different floors. All right. Or two floors in this case. It must have been the cafeteria down here too, though. But, can't really tell with all the overgrown trees. We thought this was a body bag at first, <laughs> but uh, so it's still saying cabana on it. Could have been just for like a suit. There's, oh, oh shit. It's okay. Um, there's a staircase right here and a staircase literally right next to it for absolutely no reason. Huh. Yeah, like leads to nowhere. Actually, no, it does lead somewhere. It leads somewhere, but there's two of them literally right next to each other. Like hmm. Oh, the stomach's growling. Even though there's been a lot of deaths on this island, and it's such a dark history to it, right now as we're walking, it just feels pretty peaceful. It feels peaceful, but I like, you yeah. feel it. Yeah. I've never had that in an abandoned building before. Oh. Really? It's just like, like, where you just feel it, you yeah. What, do you feel like kind of creeped out or like this haunted feeling? No, it's just like, you're just like heavy chested. Right now I feel pretty relaxed. Wow, look. Dude, there's just so many vines all over the walls. I thought by now in Italy, the mosquitoes would be dead. They're everywhere here still. They're the tiger Asian mosquitoes that you guys have been seeing um, from the previous Italian videos. <laughs> yeah, they're still alive and it's already October. Yeah, I think it's the same thing that happened last year. Um, there's global warming happening and the temperatures, they're not cold enough at all anymore to kill off the mosquitoes during the fall or winter season. And that's why they overpopulate for the spring. So Italy, I just gotta work on that. We're moving on to another building over here. That is a huge spider. For real? Huge. How big? Freaking. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. It's right there. Oh, okay. Oh. It's, it's a decent size. a lot bigger bro. I, I'm out man. Size of my hand. I don't do spiders. Size of my hand bro. Yeah if you want to see spiders bigger than that go to Southeast Asia. During the summer man you'll find them the size of your hand is pretty crazy. What do you think this building was? Yeah. This is what's keeping it up. What the heck? Huh. Maybe a drying rack? A drying rack? Yeah, Could be. Two poles right here, maybe. But if the heat comes from the bottom, heat rises past. Yeah, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. Guys, do you happen to know what these could be for? Pretty strange machine. So as we're exploring this part of the rooms, we don't really know what all these stuff were used for. We think this kind of makes it clear that this building or this part of the building was used for laundry. Maybe it was like a laundry mat for everyone to use. And maybe these two giant things were like the dryers. Not all fun and games for urbex, especially when you go through brush. Oh, no! Okay. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> moment we're now trying to make way to the chapel that should be cool to see so this must have been like a little dormitory wow this hallway is gorgeous look at one of the rooms this wall isn't busted It's a bathtub. We just made it to the chapel. And this is how the inside looks. It's pretty crazy if you think about it. The people here would come to pray after being exiled onto this island. Especially to those that got sick by the Black Plague or the Bubonic Plague. It's actually a lot of pathways everywhere through the brush, which indicates people come to explore here all the time. My first time here on boat. Really? Yeah. Is it cool? I don't know. So we just found a bridge. I'm not wearing my black shoes. Those were slippery. So after crossing that bridge, we made it to the burial grounds. This is where they would burn the victims who were diseased. It's probably all fertile soil right here. So you can imagine how many deaths have been here. Over 160,000 people were buried here. In recent years, the Italian state auctioned a 99-year lease of Favilia, which would remain state property, to raise revenue, hoping that a buyer would redevelop the hospital into a luxury hotel. The highest bid came from an Italian businessman who planned to invest 20 million euros in restoration projects. However, the lease did not proceed because his project was just not to meet all the conditions. Other sources suggested that the deal was annual because the bid was too low. Another opportunity came up in 2015 when a private group was hoping to raise 25 to 30 million euros. But as of mid-2019, the island still sits vacant. Wow guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was one of my favorite explorations that I've ever done so far. To be one of the very few explorers to go on that island and to document it is such a great honor. I also just want to say to those who have passed away on the island, rest in peace. If you're wondering where I am, I'm currently here in China creating a China series for you guys. I already have like 15 abandoned places filmed. And I think you guys are gonna be really happy about it. I think in these recent videos, um, I haven't been up to par as my first European series and the Japan series, so with the China series, I've been really focusing and going hard at it. So they're probably going to be one of my best videos that I'll be putting out ever. 
So stay tuned for that. I hope to bring them out towards the end of this year. And I'm sorry for the lack of uploads lately. It's because in China, it's very hard to go on YouTube. Anyway, I'm gonna end the video now. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe. Most importantly, hit the notification button bell. It hasn't been notifying a lot of you guys lately. So double check it again. Leave your comments and thoughts down below and share the video. And of course, if you want to support the channel, definitely consider becoming a Patreon member. You can find our Patreon page down in the description below. All the support will lead to more content and higher quality content. And I've changed the Patreon page a lot. You can now support me for less than a cup of coffee, which is like $2 a month. And other than that, it also greatly helps me a lot because so far I've really been funding everything by myself and it can cost a lot of money and your support will help me continue creating these videos i know in recent months you've probably been noticing that i've always been mentioning my patreon page nowadays well it's because youtube i'll be honest it's a scary place now there's so many new rules and regulations that just happen out of nowhere out of the blue and if you guys don't remember, um, monetization was turned off on my channel about maybe six months ago. And it was such a scary situation. So that's why I'm really trying to build up this Patreon page because you never know what's gonna happen to this platform one day. But I still want to always continue to make these videos for you guys. Patreon has always been a great way for creators or artists to have support backed up by their viewers. So I hope you understand. I'm really not trying to annoy anyone with this Patreon page, but if you put your situation in my shoes, I think it's highly necessary to have a backup plan. Also, if you have not seen it yet, but I've released some new merch, you can find it down the link in the description, or you can click one of the images that shows the Ronin merch. It's been pretty sick. The new design is awesome, and unfortunately, because I'm in China, I don't have the hoodie with me to show you guys in person, but we have been getting a ton of orders and I just wanna say thank you so much, I appreciate it. And you can also buy some new Ronin stickers, which is pretty cool. Uh, I can't wait to get back home and just be able to wear one and rock a sticker on my laptop or on my luggage. And for those of you who have purchased merch already, take a photo, I'm really excited to see how it looks like in person and tag me in the photo. Till next time though, I hope you guys live a life of freedom and wonder and I'll see you all in the next adventure, peace.